Well, hello, welcome. So glad to have each and all of you here uh, to join us today. We also have a live audience, as you can see behind us. So we welcome all of you that are here IRL as well as virtual. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. This starts the entire week of the Nonprofit Power Week, thanks to Ide Bailey, and we are going to, as I like to say, nerd out on cybersecurity. So it's going to be a fantastic week. We're starting off today with Kyle um, Hendrickson, Director of Cybersecurity for Ide Bailey. But before we jump into and get super nerdy with Kyle, because he already like prefaced that he's he knows this stuff, and so there's a reason that he's here today and kicking us off for this nonprofit power week. Uh, but we, of course, do want to thank our sponsors that keep this show going and growing with um, unscripted episodes. So uh, that can get dangerous, but we do want to give a shout out to our amazing presenting sponsors. Those include Bloomering, American Nonprofit Academy, Be Generous, Fundraising Academy at National University, your part-time controller, staffing boutique, nonprofit thought leader, and the nonprofit nerd. If you haven't checked these companies out, I encourage you to do so, but you know the drill. Not now. Do it in about 28 and a half minutes. That's the best time to check them out because you don't want to miss any of today's episode. But if you do or you want to watch it again, you also know where to find us because we've become the new uh, binge series yeah. on so many different uh, streaming platforms. We've heard numerous times that someone will share an episode and several hours later they're still watching the nonprofit <laughs> show so you can find us on roku youtube vimeo uh, amazon fire tv as well as podcasts for those of you that are podcast listeners are you a podcast listener Colin? Oh, yeah. oh, oh okay. crime series uh historical drama okay oh, excuse me the nonprofit show <laughs> So you can find us on podcasts wherever you stream uh, your entertainment. You can find us there. So without further ado, Julia, let's let's get Kyle started. Hey, Kyle, we are thrilled you came to Phoenix, our home base. Um, we don't always identify where we're coming to uh, live from, you know, the nonprofit show every day, but we are based in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I was telling Kyle Hendrickson, director of cybersecurity for I Bailey, it's kind of an interesting thing because Jarrett Ransom and I, in our lifetime, we've not really been this close or IRL as we like to say too many times yeah. uh, we work from remote studios and so this is really an exciting opportunity to gather um, in the city where we live and work and get this conversation live um, so it's it's uh, something we want to make sure that we really give our gratitude to I Bailey for kicking us off for this week it's really great yeah let's hear yeah. the studio audience yeah. <laughs> Kyle Hendrickson, you come to us from where? From my Bailey now. <laughs> uh, from Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo, I love it. So you came here to warm up? It's a little chilly in Fargo this morning. I think it was <laughs> yeah. around 34 degrees. Oh, yikes. Well, you got to come to sunny Arizona because we don't have that problem in too many spots. But we do have more and more problems with cybersecurity. And so that's the the down and dirty of it. We really need to talk about that and with the nonprofit sector, it's such a frightening topic. And so as Jarrett mentioned, this is gonna be a whole week dedicated to this topic. But today you're gonna to kind of kick us off with the five top things that we need to be thinking about in order to keep ourselves um, safe. So are you ready to go, Kyle Hendrickson? I'm in. Okay, <laughs> all right. So tip number one, know the current cybersecurity attacks. You're getting right into it. You're freaking us out. You can jump right in. Yeah. Right in, right in. Like, how do we do this? Well, so to defend against a malicious adversary, it helps to know where they're coming from and what they're doing so that we understand what we need to do to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the big things right now that we see as uh, cybersecurity trends are ransomware, business email compromise, mm -hmm. uh, supply chain attacks, like vendor management, those types of things, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, phishing attacks, and, and just understanding what they're trying to do so that you can put the proper protections in place. We don't wanna guess, this isn't magic, there's no <laughs> mysteriousness. Things happen for a reason, and we wanna understand those reasons so we can make sure that we're properly protected. Okay, so, I love what you're saying, and I, and I think I get that. I'm, I'm like, yeah, we need to, education is power. 
but I mean, what are we like watching CNN and they're going to tell us this or how do we get, how do we know what to, to be looking for? So we want to work with a trusted advisor. And so one of the advantages we have here at I Bailey is we're not just your tax or audit partner. We have a lot of other uh, specialty services like cybersecurity where we're able to come in and look at your business, uh, understand what your concerns are, what your processes are, what your people's concerns are, what your uh, leadership is looking for so that we can help you create a, a roadmap based on where your current gaps are, what your current uh, landscape is as far as controls that you use to protect your environment. Um, and, and make a plan together on how we can improve and get where you're properly managing risk. And is this for all wow. size nonprofits? Because I can only imagine some yeah. of those smaller nonprofits are thinking, we don't have the bandwidth to, to manage yeah. this. Um, so typically we, have, we do have a threshold for working with companies, um, but it's very, very small. And okay. so the smallest companies could still call, ask for advice, we're here to help. Um, for those who do not have their own staff, uh, we can do managed services for them. Nice. We can help make them a plan. Okay. So they don't have to go out and just look to hire a bunch of people, especially in this job market that's going on right now. Yeah, it's, it's hard difficult. to find people. <laughs> yeah. And we have people and we're able to help and, mm -hmm. and make sure they're managing risk properly. Great. Okay, Kyle. So I'm already, my hair did go on fire a little bit, but now you put it out. You, you made me understand this is a calmer situation, not to panic yet. It's a message of hope. <laughs> I love it's a message of hope. We can all use that. But tip number two is a possible another little high hair and fire moment. Invest in cybersecurity insurance. What is that? Ooh. So one of the big problems is over the last five years or so around cybersecurity insurance, and, and this is um, engaging with an insurance carrier so that if you do have ransomware or a business email compromise or something else that affects your ability to do business from a cybersecurity perspective, mm -hmm. that they have uh, the ability to uh, compensate you for your lost wages, lost uh, profits, those types of things, and, mm -hmm. and make your business whole or reasonably whole. So that's what cybersecurity insurance's goal is. Over the last five years or so, companies have relied upon that too much mm -hmm. and not invested in the actual protections that they need. Now insurance carriers are requiring certain controls to be in place in order to get coverage in the first place. And that's what a lot of our clients are looking at right now is how do I get my renewal? Because now they're asking me to do more things Interesting. to protect data. To get up to speed yep. so that they are a, a risk you know, oriented uh, client insurance carriers are really interested in not paying out claims <laughs> <laughs> that's how they I make money yeah. and so they want certain things to be in place that yeah. they know is going to stop them from having to pay claims I, I have to witness though i've never heard of cybersecurity insurance until just now and so i can only imagine many of our viewers and listeners are thinking the same thing kind of that oh no moment because mm -hmm. we're a family audience right <laughs> don't want to say anything else but um that is cause for concern. So as a board member, I would think that's something that we need to have on our checklist to ask when it comes to compliance and just overall security. Yep. And so it's a big deal because the average um, cost of a ransomware Gosh. incident Hair and is fire just short of a quarter million dollars. Ooh. And so that's a big impact, yeah. especially when we as nonprofits are tasked with providing services to people. And especially uh, a lot of times where it's people in need or we're, yeah. ser we're yeah. serving our communities. Yeah. And what does a quarter million dollar ransomware payment yeah. mean to your organization? First of all, does that allow you to even continue operating? Right. It could shut you down. Or does that impact your ability to give? Mm. Wow. It's, a re it's really an interesting um cause for concern and I think later on in the week we're going to spend more time yeah. on this but really quickly before we move on to tip number three um, is this something that your normal risk management uh, partner insurance broker are they going to have this or, or do we have to go out 
and find this is an added question. So this is part of a cybersecurity insurance policy. So when you're talking about cybersecurity insurance policies, it's just important to talk to your broker, work with someone that you trust, and understand your limits and sublimits. So there's going to be specific things that are called out. Mm -hmm. We just want to make sure that it matches what your tolerance for risk is. Okay. And just to remind our listeners and our viewers, we are going to actually have one of our episodes where we, we do a drill down on this because it is such a big topic. And um, wow, amazing. Okay. So just to refresh everybody, tip number one, know your current cybersecurity environment or attack potential. Invest in cybersecurity insurance. Okay. Now this is really interesting because when I was looking at this, I have to witness to you. I was like, well, what? I hadn't <laughs> thought about this. Vendor security assessments. Talk to us about that, Kyle. So as we become more interconnected throughout all of IT, all of information technology, everything that makes our businesses run, um, we are dependent on third parties. We're dependent on vendors to be able to do things for us or provide services to us. A lot of times things like software as a service type components, it might be a website, it might be a mobile app, it might be something that we're using. And we wanna make sure that just because we are protecting our data appropriately within our organization, that our partners are also protecting that data the same way we would expect. Um, a long time ago, when Target got breached, it was because was of, of a HVAC yes, contractor, contractor. Wow. and they trusted yes. them from a technology perspective yeah. too much, and it allowed them to steal everybody's credit cards. Yeah. Um, I would say probably a lot of people listening or watching this uh, yeah. got new debit cards yeah. or credit cards yeah. because Raised of that. Raised their hands, too. I, just like I was Julia. one of them. Yeah, I was one of them. Yeah. And yeah. more recently, we are looking at things like IT services that sure. are being used to keep all of our businesses up and running. In 2021, uh, there was the SolarWinds hack, and that was a software that IT departments use to monitor and make sure that they can continue to support uptime requirements for businesses. They tell them when things fail so they can react really, really quickly. Oh. That IT vendor got compromised. Wow. And then it was used to compromise all of the other, or, or not all, a, a, a portion of the customers of SolarWinds yeah. mm -hmm. to further mm. their, own, uh, their own gain, stealing data, yeah. manipulating systems. Wow. I, I was really interested, you know, kind of exploring that. And, and I'll give you a little heads up. If you go to the iBailey.com website, um, there's a very robust part of that website dedicated to cybersecurity. You'll see Kyle's image and you'll get to learn more about Kyle and, and their work. Um, but I thought this was a fascinating thing to really explore and nothing that I was really thinking of. I, I wasn't thinking about how we are linked. And, and you said something very magical, Jared. You know, think about how interconnected we are. And, yeah. and we are always promoting, even on the nonprofit show, Find those vendors that can can pick up that heavy load for you. So it's it is something that's going to actually becoming more and more part of the landscape of how we do our business. You know, one of the things that has happened, COVID, uh, silver lining is the acceleration of technology. Yeah. And so cybersecurity yeah. and these hopeful messages, <laughs> hopefully, right, is what we need to focus on uh, so that we can continue to do the good work in and around our community. So let's move us into tip number four. Um, how do we plan for when things might go wrong? Well, first of all, going back to tip number one, understanding what the risks are out there okay. allows us to create that plan for when things go wrong. Uh, things can and will go wrong. That's, that's a guarantee. And it doesn't have to be just cyber. We all yeah. know that there's been su supply chain constraints. There's been... Uh, natural disasters, there's been all kinds of things that have disrupted businesses, whether they're nonprofit or otherwise. Mm -hmm. This isn't limited to nonprofits. So right. understanding what the risks are and then making a plan. And this isn't just a technology thing. This is people, process, and technology. We want to make sure okay. because the business yeah. still needs to survive. It still needs to support yeah. its clients and its customers. Yeah. Uh, we want to make sure that technology is available to allow those business processes to continue to proceed even in times of, of adversity. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about uh, working through what an incident is from a cybersecurity perspective, 
we're talking about someone stealing data, someone stealing money, or somebody impacting your availability to do anything IT, ransomware, those types of things. And so what alternate uh, processing capabilities do you have in order to continue your business up and running? And ransomware has no relation to me. I just need <laughs> to say that is Jarrett Ransom. <laughs> That's that true. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. We changed her name three years ago just for this yes, moment. We dropped we the wear. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that was coming down the pipe. Kind of. Hey, um, okay, I'm, I'm fascinated by this. And once again, to Jarrett's comment, um, this seems like a pretty heavy lift. So yes, yeah, so it's one thing to have a plan. Mm -hmm. It's a completely other thing to test it. Mm -hmm. okay. And so we wanted to <laughs> walk throughs, um, both full interrupt testing and or tabletop testing. And what we mean by that is getting those people that would be responsible for responding to a business outage or a downtime yeah. event in the same room or same room virtually and mm -hmm. talking through what is our plan. How are we going to keep our, our clients informed that they know what's going on to the degree that they need to know? Uh, how are we going to uh, honor our commitments for notifications if it comes to that? Um, what is our marketing message, both internally and externally? How are we going to get our business processes up and running? What is that underlying technology that needs to be recovered in order to continue supporting what we need to do for our mission? Okay, so. I got to ask you this, of all the things that you've, so far, the, the top tips, this seems to be kind of like the most in-depth thing, because it's not enough just to get the insurance or to understand what's out there. This is like actually sitting down and saying, okay, we have um, a crisis communications plan is, is what I'm thinking of, Sounds you know, like Jared, in that we know we, who we're going to call, what we're going to do. Yep. It's pretty intense work. This is a big deal. So yeah. I would say the first thing would be understand where your gaps are mm -hmm. so we can make a plan on how to get you where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And then let's build the plan. Let's test the plan. Let's make sure everybody's comfortable with the plan because eventually you're going to need to use the plan. And again, <laughs> we, we want to understand, are we using this plan because of an incident or because of a breach? Mm -hmm. And we want to catch things earlier in the cycle. There's no guarantees in cybersecurity, but we can arm you with the right tools uh, to catch things earlier in that cycle rather than later. Late means bad. <laughs> Late means really bad. It means really bad. Okay, now this is like tip number five. And this is, I wanna spend a little bit more time on this because this is a big point of discussion in yep. the nonprofit sector. Tip number five, you say know the rules for disclosing cyber attacks. And we talk a lot about this is that we're afraid in the nonprofit sector to deliver bad news or to look like we're not good stewards or to talk about fraud or any problems because we don't want to lose donors. Yep. And so we have to kind of navigate away from that. What are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, we have an obligation to all the people that we are serving to protect their data. That's, that's yeah. number one. We want to make sure that they trust us because either we're serving them or they trust us because we're they're donating to us. Exactly. And we want to make sure that we're honoring all of those commitments. Second of all, depending on what industry that you're serving, you may have regulatory requirements. Along with that, depending on what state you live, you may have state notification requirements. Yeah. Wow. And it's not just where you live and operate, it's where you're people that you're serving, your clients, everybody you have data for, it's where they live. And wow. so where this gets complicated is if you're serving people in Mexico or, or uh, Canada or in Europe or wherever, they also have different rules. Uh, so if you have cybersecurity insurance, one of the very first things is I recommend getting in touch with them earlier in the process because they have pre-negotiated rates with people like, um, breach attorneys who understand the legal ramifications mm -hmm. to having a breach of data, um, along with um, the forensics, the incident response people, everything you're gonna need in order to recover. Um, you're gonna need legal advice on how to properly respond to this if all your clients aren't just in the state where you live and right. you know those rules. 
this sounds so overwhelming. Yeah, it and, does. Um, again, hopeful messages. I, I heard that from <laughs> Kyle, uh, definitely. And as you heard, there's plenty of resources and probably more coming to the I Bailey uh, website. But where do we go with all this information now, Kyle? So we have these five tips. I heard you say if you have cybersecurity insurance, which I'm sure now all of our viewers and listeners <laughs> are doing that probably maybe at this moment. <laughs> what do we do with all this information? Well, I think the, the first thing is to find someone you trust, a trusted advisor that you can work with. So you can understand where you're at now, where you need to be. If you have questions around cybersecurity, um, talk with your broker, but also a trusted cybersecurity advisor, uh, because it isn't just an assumption that you're going to get your cybersecurity insurance policy now. Right. There are required items. There's also wow. recommended items that need to be in place so that they think you're an acceptable risk. Wow. Insurance companies have actuaries and very, very right. smart people yep. that understand what reduces their risk yeah. of having to pay out a claim. Yeah. That translates directly to reducing risk for your organization. So it's a great place to start okay. is getting those pieces and parts in place, but having somebody that you trust uh, giving you advice on how to do those things holistically. Um, we don't want to just check a box. Right. If we're going to spend money on something, let's make it matter to the yeah. whole organization and implement cybersecurity controls in a way that reduce friction. We don't mm -hmm. want to cause more pain mm -hmm. and more interruption of business. Let's yeah. do things intelligently and talk through things uh, and, and find somebody who's been there, done that, and, and has uh, successfully tackled this in other businesses. Julia, I'm going to... Um put you on blast here, but yeah. I'm curious because you serve in our community on a lot of different boards. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing cybersecurity at the board conversation? No, no, I'm not. It's, it's horrific because I think about how much money and data mm -hmm. we have uh, with donors across the landscape. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that information is, is there with credit card information mm -hmm. and, and phone numbers and passcodes and everything so it's home addresses all yeah, the information everything. is there yeah and so it's, it's fascinating Kyle to hear you talk about this and I'm, I'm fascinated having worked with Ide Bailey for a long time in um, our community in business and seeing all this I'm fascinated that the accounting sector huh. would notice or would would draw a line between accounting services mm -hmm and management and advice and finance directly back to cybersecurity. And so I think that if, if nothing else, that sends the message of how important and costly this is. Right. It's not just an, it's a, it's not a nice thing to have. It's not like, oh yeah, well, let's do some training. This, this yeah. needs to be moving up into what's going on and we're so, not doing it enough. So I would say I Bailey has a goal of not just being an audit partner or a tax partner. Our goal is to be holistic business advisors. So this isn't just cybersecurity, it isn't just tax, it isn't just audit. Really all those needs that enables a business to be successful. That's where we're trying to fit. It's awesome. Well, it's, it's a, you're an amazing partner throughout uh, the nonprofit sector. We love the I Bailey Resourcefulness Awards. Um, you've been a judge, Jerry yes, Hansen, and uh, it's, it's been really great. One of my favorite public humili humiliations in my whole life was being at one of the resourcefulness awards and I sat on a board that won and I actually screamed like I was being murdered <laughs> um, but it was so exciting to get you know to get that yeah. that uh, winner win for our organization so uh, yeah I Bailey's doing a lot of really interesting things across the landscape we're super excited to have Kyle Hendrickson here director of cybersecurity yeah with us for the whole week. This is Nonprofit Power Week with the Nonprofit Show. We don't do this very often. Jarrett and I made a commitment to finding some topics that we liked with, with experts that we really trusted. And so we only do this a handful of times um, each year. And so this is really gonna be an exciting thing. It's gonna be very exciting. And this is just scratching the surface, I can tell. Uh, so again, you know, Kyle's gonna he shared these top five tips, and we're going to go deeper into so many of these conversations throughout the week. Um, and again, you know, Nonprofit Power Week here with I Bailey. 
We are here live with the audience today, but unfortunately they're not gonna be around each and every day, <laughs> although we wish that they were. Um, but it's been fascinating. And again, you joined us here from uh, North Dakota. Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah. Can yeah. you hear it in his accent? <laughs> I thought it was a lack of accent. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right, right. Well, this is gonna be really cool. We just wanna make sure um, the top five cybersecurity um, things to be thinking about, number one, know what the current landscape is, um, invest in cybersecurity and um, insurance, understand those vendor relationships and how they can impinge upon what's going on. That I think is the big sleeper. That's a fascinating topic. And we're gonna spend more time on that because it's a, it's a deep dive, isn't yep. it? Well, I mean, we all depend on somebody. Uh, we're yes. not running everything yeah. internal to our own companies and yeah. even things like payroll, what happens if your payroll vendor has an incident? Uh, people stop showing up if you don't pay them. <laughs> I would, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I think I might. So what yeah. plans and, and, and alternate ideas can you put in place in order to continue right. on with business if something should happen? I love it. And then tip number four, plan for when things go wrong. And tip number five, know the rules of disclosure, which again, all of these things we're going to be talking about more in depth, but I just think, um, Kyle, it's really interesting that you shed a different light on all these issues and, and give us, uh, giving us some new things to think about, especially as we start marching towards the end of Q4, where we tend to let the other things slide because we're so um, desperate to get those, those year-end donors and things. I, I would imagine this is a, a pretty perilous time. So, um, Jared, this has really been fun, hasn't it? It's been fantastic. I think we're going to have to do more of this. And thanks for trusting us, Kyle. We just met uh, this morning, but it's been a wonderful conversation. I look forward to the rest of the week with you um, and, you know, diving deeper in all of these topics and, and throughout the episodes of this week. Uh, for those of you that are saying, you know, okay, these are top five tips. I don't have any of them in practice currently. <laughs> That's okay. Kyle has more hopes, um, messages of hope rather <laughs> uh, to join us throughout the week. But for those of you again, that are saying, okay, I need to share this episode. There's so much in here that we need to make sure that our community is aware of. You can share this episode. It'll be on uh, the archive and shared far and wide in a mere few hours after today's uh, recording wraps up. But we do want to thank I Bailey uh, for having you here. We want to thank you for being here and for being with us here all week. Uh, we also, you know, just want to remind you to check out their website so that you don't feel like you have to do all of this mm -hmm. alone. Uh, you don't. This is a great partner partnership uh, across the nation. And I was just in Salt Lake City and mentioned I Bailey to a colleague of mine there, and I said, you know, if this is what you need, let me get you in touch with someone at I Bailey. There's uh there's They're all over offices, yeah, yeah in all communities. All so yeah, it's fantastic. Hey again, um, as a reminder, if you miss the, any parts of this episode or you want to watch it again or share it, because I have a feeling many of our viewers and yeah. listeners are saying, I have at least 20 people that need to yeah. hear what Kyle just said. Uh, you can find us on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, Vimeo, as well as, as podcast. And of course, we want to thank our presenting sponsors that keep our show alive and growing, um, even flying in guests for live audience appearance here um, into our Phoenix community mm -hmm. from North Dakota. So we're so grateful to be able to offer this IRL, which means in real life. Uh, yay! <laughs> exactly, exactly. So thank you so very much to I Bailey uh, for this nonprofit power week. We also want to thank Bloomering, American Nonprofit Academy, Be Generous, Fundraising Academy at National University, your part-time controller, staffing boutique, nonprofit thought leader, and the nonprofit nerd. Thanks for all of you for joining us here today. Again, thanks to our live audience that uh, dedicated their morning and their coffee time to join us here. I'm uh, so grateful to have each and every one here. And Julia, I'll let you sign us off. Hey, I really mean this from the bottom of my heart, especially since we forced Kyle to stand between the two of us <laughs> this closely this morning. Stay well. So you can do well. Thanks to I Bailey and the crew that showed up today. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.